Hello, composers! I have some company here today in my studio with my cat Simba. Uh, you are watching Studio Time with Mike, and in this episode, you will get to watch behind the scenes as I show and use my amazing story folder, which is a method I use to basically sketch the main idea of every new composition I start. Uh, this particular composition will be what I call power music, and you can see my visual inspiration right here in the background. So let's get started right now. Watch behind the scenes as I compose music, record epic ideas, do sound design, play with new sounds, and do all kinds of creative work in my studio. Welcome to Studio Time with Mike. All right, composers, so here we are again in the studio, in the DAW, and today I'm going to show you behind the scenes as well as try out my new story uh, folder here, which is a another method. If you saw my previous episode of Studio Time with Mike, where I went into the mock-up composing method, which is basically this, what I have here, the independent tracks that are the main essential elements of music, um, in my workflow at least. Well, up here I have something called Story, which is uh, basically a, an even lighter version of the mock-up composing method. Basically, the harmony, meaning the chords, and the theme, meaning the melody, and I usually also play the bass uh, with my left hand. So if we check up here, this is actually the light version of the mock-up uh, I composed. And then once the mockup is complete, like this, let's say this is complete now, I will add into these folders further layers and details to fill up the complete canvas of the entire composition. So check this out. This is the story folder. It sounds like this now. So that is the, the the basic idea. I mean, you want to get your sketch down as fast and simple as possible. And this is why I use the story track on top before even, you know, starting to mess around with different instruments and sounds and searching for libraries and so on. Uh, I use what I call the golden combination, meaning uh, for me personally, strings with piano stacked. So I actually have two separate strings here on the chords. So let me show you what I have, by the way. So I have uh, in the story folder, I only have two groups, which is the core. And by the way, I compose on these groups. So these are layers. The, it's basically only two tracks. Here I record my chord progression like this. Let's see, what, can I, can't I do that? I need to do this. So that's, um, I use a sub bass to basically boost the low end and only on the low note with a key limit here. So that is the first track. Then I have a piano. I'm using addictive keys, which is my favorite for this. And then I have like a soft lush string pad, patch from Symphobia, plus a string uh, fr patch from Omnisphere. Um, also, I think this is a very fast legato strings. Okay, so all in all it sounds like this. And I can also run with the mod wheel here. At the lowest it's basically only piano. I'm not sure why I don't hear um, this right now. Mock up one. Did I mess things up in here? It should be should be sending out something. Um, I need to look into that later. So basically, that's the course. I basically record. The chord progression, and I label it, as you can see. Every time I change the chord, I cut the region and label it. And then I have the theme track where I basically add the main 
theme, the melody. Again, piano, strings, and another strings. And I also actually use, as you can see, transposing here, so I get a thicker sound in the leading melody. Uh, I'm not sure if I can't solo like only the theme. It doesn't seem to be working while in it is in a folder. Yeah, now I'm just... I don't know what I was doing there. So I have the theme track and the chord track and that is it. Th those two tracks will form the basis of the idea for the new track. And on the theme track in particular, I like actually have... Um, let's see... I think I have a Symphobia here as well. Yep. Um, let me close those. Then that means so I can play, uh, since I have a fast legato, legato patch on Omnisphere, I can play... And as you can see, this is how I use it. it you could play the melody. Only, which is what I've done actually in this case. But often I use it not as only melody, but I call it a theme track. So I basically can often start with only the theme track, not even the chords. I can harmonize it later. So that means I can start playing, let's say, something like this, for example. So that is the basis of the new composition, the the seed of uh, the composition, the main idea. And then I can harmonize it with the chord track and I have my story completed. And if you simply check this quite uh, fast now, that's the, the essential idea, the chords, meaning the harmonies and the theme, meaning the melody. Now, if I mute that, I have actually arranged it on my mock-up here, which is the percussion group, the rhythm, meaning ostinatos and stuff, bass, harmony, again, chords here, uh, the theme track and the fills track uh, or mixing group. So I have these different groups. So the light idea in the story, and then I arrange for mock-up, meaning it sounds like this, almost a full composition. And so on. So it's the same idea, but I had percussion, ostinatos, some fills like runs um, and stuff like here, that here, a harmony line on the melody, um, bass line, and so on. Now, after that, so I have the story, the, which is the essential idea, then the mock-up. The final part is actually composing the detail, the full canvas of the composition, which I do later in these folders below the mock-up uh, tracks. So in, now in this episode, I will actually start a new composition um, and sketch out ideas using the story track. So I will now save this project as a new copy and then delete everything and start from scratch with a new music composition. But before I dive into the new project and the EW again, I'm also going to share quite an unusual method I have for being inspired for the kind of vibe and uh, character and style of the music I'm going to create. So I already know that my next composition will be a what I call power music kind of track with that dirty uh, action power type of vibe. So I usually go online and find a cool um, free picture like on Pixabay or, and uh, other sites you can find free uh, pictures that you can use and then I download it which I have done right here so I went for this muscle car um, and then I use that as the picture for the track and I use this for visual inspiration then I also want to use it for a, a music video for the track so I do this in one of my, my mega templates in Final Cut Pro X where I chose to, because I wanted to have a darker feel than this picture has. It has the muscle kind of feel already in the picture, uh, but I made it darker, applied some filters like cold steel and then some uh, animations to it. 
So it looks like this now, and if I play this, you can see. Compared to just the picture, which was this. So that is the starting point. Now let's dive into the DAW again here. And here we are. Let's see what we have. So for the story track, let's go to the chords. Uh, no, let's start with the theme, in fact. Let's see what we have. Right? Right, so I need to bring up the picture again. No, I want to bring up the, the visual. Where are we? Video footage. So let me look at this at the same time as I like. Hmm, let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let me move the microphone. Can you still hear me? So I want to go for obviously not a major vibe, a minor and probably some dissonant chromatic movements. Let's try to find the bass groove or something. Ra -da -da. Probably going to be really repetitive, like in the the groove, um, but uh, so not so much uh, harmonic movement. But I want to have that powerful vibe. And actually, if you want to go for power, I actually recommend keeping the harmonic movement at the minimal, and more going for a groove uh, with the rhythm. <laughs> Oh, that's my water bottle. Let's see, well, where can we go from C? C then we can go from... Like so. Th that's what I like, like a walking bass line. That's groovy. So instead of going just there, I go... So... It's... Uh, I want to adjust my chair so I have the correct seating position now. Let's see. Where are we? C. probably want to have some uh, because I will definitely add uh, power guitars like heavy distorted guitars with this ryth rhythm so so that's why I want to add some kind of more culture to it like holding the notes here like um, because I want to open up the power core there so think like Let's see, can we go? Can we go to there? There. Let's see, where can I go next? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, whenever you go like a, a, a semi note in a, anywhere, this time in the bass line, it really adds that that tension vibe. That dark feel. So so let's start. We have the C here. I want to increase the volume in my headphones. Oh, whoops. Then I'm gonna go. So I'm going. I could stay on the C here. Um, actually, because we basically have this chord. So going from oh, C minor to uh, G sharp uh, major. And then I go up to a sem um, full note here and a semi tone here. So And then I want to do something different in in the turn. All right, I think I have something. Let's move this to the side and use my story folder and theme track here to record something. Let's see. I want to find the tempo too. So 
Um, but 120, let's listen. Okay, so... Too fast. Uh, by the way, power music that has that really muscle kind of vibe usually is actually a lower tempo. So let's see with 100 what we can get. Let's record it, in fact. Oops, I wanted to record at the marker. There. Forgot, but let's see what we have. Yep, I think uh, I can go for an even lower tempo I have, because that chugging guitars really works amazing for the power and intensity action kind of vibe. Or not intensity, but like big muscle type of vibe when you have it at a slower tempo. Like so. So try that, 90. Made a mistake, but let's see the tempo. So, um, I think I'm liking the tempo more and more here. Silence, piano! Silence! What? What are you doing? I think the sustain pedal is whacking out again. I need to buy, like, a new sustain pedal. It's... Silence. Silence in class! All right, so where were we? Um, yeah, so... This is how I sketched my tracks, by the way. So I use this golden combination. Let's see, my phone is beeping. Um, I actually added the sub bass track uh, before. I didn't mention that before in the video, but I added that because I want that lower vibe because, and I have like an Omnisphere clicky type of sub, sub 37. So you can listen. It's a sub bass, but it's really distorted and clicky to really break through in the mix. I still have the piano. Still have the strings. I think I have the strings in with... Yep, yeah, with an octaver on. Let me close those. Which is symph... I, I love Symphobia still. This is the first orchestral library I bought, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was like, oh, I don't know, oh, 1,000 US dollars or something. It's crazy expensive. Though, so, uh, but it has really served me well. And then I have the more pad types uh, strings in Omnisphere. So that's the team theme track. Uh, so you have to, of course, imagine chugging guitars and whatever you want to add. But I love this for sketching. I don't want to dive into all kinds of sounds when I sketch the idea. So then I... What did I do next? Yeah, then I went up. All right, so let's try it one more time. Forget the turn! Oh, no, 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 the score editor. I forgot the turn again. I could, of course, just go straight here and skip the turn and add it in the editing, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just like recording things live. Whoa, man, that turn uh, is tricky to do while you play that other kind of rhythm. It's actually really tricky to play different rhythms with your left and right hand, and I'm not like the best pianist in the world, a keyboardist. Um, I need to practice more, because as a composer it is really good to 
be as proficient as you can with the keyboard. I'm gonna try, can't even hold the beat anymore. Okay, so I messed up a lot in that, but the first part was quite good. Let's quantize this to one, two, two, three, two, three. I can do eight notes, I think. No, that's so. Uh, I also like to. As you can see, you get the accents right in uh, in the groove straight away in my sketches. Let's see, what did I do here? I don't want that. Let's say I have the. Ba, 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 da, da. You see, I have that uh, syncopation groove going on there, which is I want to I want to keep that. So let's. Or uh, wait. Just, I, I want to skip that because I have it here, like so. So, ah, that is. A, I, I will keep that. I, I, I believe I actually made that as a mistake. Elwer after quantizing, this could be a quantize uh, a syncopated turn here. Let's listen to that. Then. bit later like so let no let's see this is this is bad one two is this too far Let's replicate that. Let's see if I can. I want to test this. I'm gonna go even higher at the last turn here. Uh, ba, ba, ba. And then, like, have a short. Keep those separated. Ba, sa, sa. I think it's too early here. Let's see. The turn is there. I'm gonna do it like so, so I have it right at the end here. Let's see. No? So I actually changed the groove there because here it's syncopated there. All right, so let's say I bring, bring this back to where it's supposed to be without a mistake. So now the rhythm is okay, but I, I need to make these accents here. I have these accents really well here. So... I think that's all right. Is it quantized? Oops. Quantized? Really? No! Oh! No! No, 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 no. Not do that. Do not do that. I accidentally quantized to 16th. I want it on 8th notes.
All right, so that's the theme. Uh, I have this is, uh, let's cut it at the end. This is, should now be, yes, it's a eight bar. I like to compose an eight bar sections. I don't know about you, even if I do three quarters or something, but now I will go for four, four in 90 BPM. Um, it simply makes sense to me to do like that. I can always cut it or extend it, but have that as a starting point at least. So that, that's the theme. I want to now uh, make sure I get the chord progression right. So I have here basically. So I'm going from, um, you could call it this A flat inversion and then to C minor. Let's see, I'm gonna do. Probably going just to mark it as C major there. So, um, one way you can do this, by the way, instead of recording it, if you want to, is to simply... Whoops, what did I do? What did I do? Create a section, and then I'm going to use step input recording here on my left screen, which you cannot see. Obviously, I cannot record both screens at the same time. But basically, I have the piano roll here now, and I'm going to open up... Let's see, I have a key command for the step recorder, step input recorder, as you can see here, I'm going to use whole notes, I think, or, I'm not sure, so let's see, I, I play, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, should I just, I want, do you know, one thing I miss in Logic, that I, had have had in other DJWs. I love Logic, by the way, but this I miss. Is now that I want to record the chords. Uh, obviously, when I let's say I play something now, I can't I can't hear it because it's this is so loud. So I would love to have like when I record something a track an option a key command, bip blip just press it. And then all other tracks are turned down by, let's say, uh, yeah, a value I decide, let's say minus 12 dB or even 18 dB. So I can hear more of the track I'm working on. Not completely solo, but like, I, you get the point. I don't know, I, I don't know if you can actually do that in Logic, perhaps with a special plugin or something, but not uh, in the ordinary Logic setup, to my knowledge. All right, so I've loaded up the step, uh, what's it called? The step input keyboard here, and I made this empty track here. So now on my other screen, I activated the MIDI input. So now I can actually just play a chord. So I know it's a C uh, minor first. And let's, let's listen, what, what do we have next? Uh, I need to deactivate the step. Where do I have that key command? MIDI in, uh, is it F3? Yep, F3, okay. So that's step input keep I can bring it up so you can see actually here. This button here is uh, what you want to have. But I, uh, uh, as you know, I really prefer having the piano roll here and the sequencer here when I compose, because when I select this clip, I can see this in full screen on my left keyboard. Uh, my left keyboard? My left monitor. Uh, so then we have, so we're going to Let's see, deactivate that. I should really have that on my main. I should add that to my main um, key command setup actually here. Let's see, I have collapse here. I should probably do like what I have, solo. Sol solo is nice actually because I have the special solo button here. Oh, so I can solo regions, speed, select all, zoom. Outer flow, which should I exchange? Media transform is also amazing to have here. Might I might exchange collapse mode, but I like that too. Hmm. I need to think about that. But for now I have it on F3. Um so then we play. They call it, yeah, what did I say? This is a, f a flat major, of course. Uh, let's see. Or 
or let's see should i have that as the full i don't remember do i exchange it right away in fact let me do it like this instead this is actually better so we have label it shift n uh c minor and then i think it's another c minor there comes the change so here we have a new region and uh, f3 to activate activate i need to have the piano roll activated and then we go for like so and then replicate that label both as a flat major so now we have wait what did i do was it still on was it still on c minor here Oh, sorry, we have four bars of C minor. So that's again the repetitiveness. Imagine this like with a chugging metal guitar. And then we change here another region uh, activate midi input and we go to what did i go to here g i forgot um i forgot so we... what did i play here G, no, three, five, uh, what is this chord? It's wrong. So. Oh, so it's basically. Should I mark that as G major or should I? No, it's not minor, but I actually don't play the three, the third. So it's like basically G five. I might actually mark it as G five now, but like a G five power chord. Again. Oh, I don't need to do that. I can just use Command R to replicate. Uh, what did I play? So I need. Oh, I need to record first. F three record, and we record it as. Wait, why? Did I get it down? I think so. So that's that. Let's listen to it without the click. Actually, I don't know why this is so loud. I need to put an... Uh, I'm sorry about that. I don't want to have a limiter on because it drains so much CPU. I just, I'm just going to lower... I think I'll lower the master output simply. Can I... Can you do this? Yes. And then master output. Stereo you out. I will just lower this right now to... Minus four or something. I don't want it to clip. I listen to this. Now let's listen. Away with the mixer. Let's see, in the end there, should I do like a passing chord? Uh, 
I will probably do it like this. Like I will keep the bar chords here, full bar chords, but I will add voice leading uh, on the chord track because it really makes a huge difference. But not on every note. So I think, I think I have the main idea down. Uh, I will actually do it another thing as well. I will record some backing percussion. I have this template with low, mid, high accents shimmer. Let's let's get the main accents down first. Let's see, that last part I'm not certain about. I'm gonna quantize this to eighth notes, I think. By the way, what, 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 you might ask, why do you quantize when you record it live? Shouldn't you keep the human feel? But this is not the end result. This is just the mock-up. I want, in my mock-up, I want everything perfectly quantized because it makes it so much easier when I can, for example, use stuff like this. Select this note and then shift P to select all sub positions that are equal, which means they need to be perfectly quantized. And then um, use that trick when I multi edit with other tracks later. So don't you worry about that. But in the end, here. Nope. I, I'm, I think I'm gonna. Which beats, which beats am I going to focus on? Let's multi edit this. So now I'm actually using the piano roll here just so you can see but I'm usually using that screen. So I'm gonna pull this because this is the main beat here. But which one, which one of these? I think that one. Or that one, let's see. Or all, but perhaps these two in lower. Let's see how that sounds. That lower too. Should should none of this be? No, not that one actually. So something oops, something like this perhaps. Probably going to have all of them, but not as marked. Again. So like that. Then we have the mid drums, which are like lower toms. Which I use as fills usually, filling up in the space. So let's try something. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, perhaps I shouldn't uh, layer on these hard hits. <laughs> let's see. I'm not. So, I'm actually not so sure about that. Right now, let's land the main accents on uh, on these first. No, I'm actually gonna go with a bam bam. I want that, those accents to really land. So uh, now that is layered. Uh, by the way, I did a little trick here, which you might have picked up on if you really listen carefully, uh, and that is that I actually, you know, the left and right symbol are like panned a bit, so um, you can see. No, you can't. I need to bring this up. Whoops. You can see that here, right crash, left crash. Um, wait a minute. Okay, so right crash, left crash. You can hear it. I have it here, all the way, and then here I changed. Why do I changed? change? Because uh, I thought it would be cool to have where of the chord changes I changed direction. 
So here I change direction and then I go back in direction as well in here. It's just a minor detail, really subconscious, but could be kind of cool. Now let's do the to low tones. Okay, so I'm going to layer. I'm gonna listen to that first. Oh, it sounds crap. Uh, what am I doing here? Let's try... So, so I'm actually going to... Let's assume the snare. I want a really fat snare. This. This is more rattly. It's more snappy, but still rattly. Let's try something. In fact, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use both these. Left and right snare hit, I think. Uh, and change the direction. Oops! Mistake. Piano, sustain! No, you don't. Oh! Why do you do that? I stomp on you, piano. I don't know why it's continuous to rain. I have deactivated the sustain pedal. Please. All right, again. Oh, mistake. I'm gonna change at the... But what did I quantize to? Quantize to... I think 16. And by the way, when you have uh, one track uh, on several... or several tracks with the same instrument like I have, I have here, if you solo one, it solos all. So if you want to listen on something here, I need to use the other solo mode. Like this really. Little twist there. Just changing the groove. Uh, okay, so that is kind of all right now. Uh, let's see. That was the. That, I I chose that. I could actually use that as the high and change the naming there, and then I want. I, I need some low tones. Let's use the higher tones as a fill. I'm gonna try. Or should I just keep it there? Let's turn off the click and if I fill this space between the main hits too much, um, I won't hear those accents because you know, for accents to be bold and powerful, they need contrast to in the dynamics, and silence is the best contrast you can have, obviously. So let's keep it that for now. Let's see if I can just add a shimmer. Where is it? Like a ride symbol driving this through. I'm gonna quantize that to see if it even works. Uh, so let's see if I can use those uh, Shift P for same position and uh, mark on the right a bit the accents. 
We're going to try that. Replicate, bam, bam, bam. Uh, because it's basically all the way through with a da -da kind of thing. Whoops. <laughs> Let's see, this is quantized on 8th notes, 16th notes, off. I need to quantize that to 8th notes. Just for the mock-up, guys, for the mock-up. Um, then I'm going to actually finish off with the bass here. So I actually have double basses here, but I'm going to see if I can change that to... Picato, just to see how it sounds. Let's try. Hmm. Let's quantize that to eight notes. And how does that sound in solo? Right. And in context with, let's say, the theme. Just adding that low bottom end. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, let's see, I have the chord sequence here, the th main theme, the percussion and the bass. Uh, I would say that is actually a complete starting point for a mock-up to, to build on this. Um, I could... I No, th there's one more thing I really need. That's something that drives this. Let's see, I'm gonna try... Oh, I don't have anything there. I'm gonna try having... Here I have guitar and audio, but... Let's what? Probably, I'm actually gonna test to just copy that, shift the call, oops, like that, and see if it just can double the base. No, probably not before I move it up. Let's see. I, th I think so, actually. So this will be double with the base. Cool. Doubling is awesome. And now for some higher drive. What do I have on this channel? Uh, Symphobia Staccato. Okay. Whoops! What did I do? What? No! No! I don't even know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I should like... If I should do like a faster rhythm like that or if I just should complement it with this low chuggy kind of vibe. I'm, I'm gonna try both. Let's, let's see, I messed up, but I wanna see the... Oh, studio, so we're gonna need 16s here. I actually think I, I have so many slow, uh, slow parts, I, I need something that drives it forward.
Let, let's see. I, I need you. I, I don't. I can't reach it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna try something. Whoops, whoops, sorry. Okay, so I made a mistake there, but let's see what we have here. If I... Is it quantized? No. What does that on 16th and see, see what does it sound like? I will actually cut it here so I can see the chord change. Okay, so what did I do wrong there? Um, let's see. I'll bring it up so you can see it actually. Here. Let's zoom in. I come in correct first. Alright, so the. Where? Where? Where am I? One, two, three, four. Is everything. I, I'm just gonna re record it from there. So this is in. This is where where am I here? Okay. Whoa! I like that in the end. Uh, let's quantize it. Let's see um, from here where it is. I actually accidentally increased the intensity because I just felt I was rushing it, uh, which worked out great. Because if you check here in the end, I, see, I yeah you can see that I the accents land harder here and yeah the um, dynamics actually increased. So uh, now we have the main elements of music, which is harmony chords here, the melody, the the percussive rhythm, the driving rhythm, and the bass. I also could add fills, but I consider that not so super important for this track. Uh, perhaps it affects like a power note or something, but let's listen to what we ended up with. This is what I will use, use as the starting point, the minimal essential idea for this power music composition track. Awesome. I, I, I like this. I should... I, I feel... Uh, one last thing I, I'll need is some uh, fills in um, in the turns. So let's do some... something on the... on the toms here. Low toms. so far but let's see I'm gonna drag that over here it was it went well until the end there because um, I'm gonna layer that just that bit like so how do I is this come on Jay yeah 
Let's see. <coughs> I'm gonna start it off actually even harder. Where am I? Is it one there? Yeah. So those are, and then let's see. I don't want to keep it. I'm gonna take this drag over as well. Like so, but only on those. Okay, so now let's quantize this to eight notes, I think. Let's see what we have. Ah! Mistake. What? Why is everything like crazy here? I guess I was on eight sixteens then. All right. My bad. Let's see. I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna have the first beat higher. Second. See, I'm gonna have the turn there, so I'm gonna skip that too. Do it like this again. See? Okay, so here at the end, I'm, I I don't even know what I'm going about. That. And now you, piano again. Silence, piano. Why? Why? Why are you? I, I'm stomping the sustain pedal. I have no idea why it does that. I mean, if anyone can tell me, how to panic, panic, panic. I have a panic button on my MIDI keyboard. It didn't help, but anyway. So I, I'm gonna see what. Something like that. Is that triplets now? Let's see. So I'm gonna have also... Where am I? Like something like that. And that... Uh, a bit higher, perhaps. Let's see. And it is even higher at the turn. Let's see. Alright, so let's quantize those to 16th. Oh, I can do it up here. If, um, I'm gonna merge those and see. Quantize to 16th notes on piano. Please, please. Let's listen now. I will leave it at that. You have seen how I work with my mock-up composing method and my story, amazing story method with the chords track here and the theme track here. That is how I start. And also uh, another sneak peek was uh, the way I use, uh, let's see if I can try, ah, well, it's, you know, the picture, the visual picture or video footage to get inspired. So I hope that you have both been inspired and motivated to compose a new track yourself and that you have learned some uh, tips and tricks from the insights watching behind the scenes as I work here with this composition. Uh, I hope you do and I hope that you take action and start making new tracks yourself right now and I will see you guys in the next video. Subscribe now and watch a lot more videos on composing music, producing music, sound design, Logic Pro X and much more. I'll see you in the next video my friends.